But you guys tell me where you at? Your motivation guy is back. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I'm here to bring you guys the latest and greatest tips to make you the best Fortnite player. Today, we're gonna talk about aim. Just recently, Gyro Controls released into the Fortnite meta, so now is the time to perfect your aim, guys, before moving on to the new control scheme. However, you might be making a few mistakes along the way. All right, so here are nine mistakes that you're gonna make when you train your aim. But before we get into this, time to get my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? It's that bunch of crunch, <laughs> and let's get this going. All right, so let's begin our list about aim training mistakes by expanding your view of the subject. Like the first mistake that you make when aim training is not really understanding the full scope of aiming. You know, some describe aim as the easiest mechanic to master. I mean, after all, like you're making complex edits. I mean, it's definitely much harder than just pointing a weapon at another player, right? Perhaps this, but you know, it's oversimplifying aiming only makes it harder to really fully master since you won't know exactly what you need to tweak and what specific skills go into fully mastering it. And so some of these important aspects really include using peaks or you know having the right sensitivity optimizing your crosshair placement and even playing under pressure you know so many factors go into this and it's not just about muscle memory luckily later on this list we're gonna cover a few of the different aspects that you should be looking into yo we got you speaking of muscle memory okay there are plenty of options to train your aim one of the best ways is through aim courses so click on the link below to check out aim lab aim lab is a free program that allows you to train your aim in a variety of different aim courses did we mention that they were fully customizable so, Okay, so here's how it works. Try an aim course, do your best, and then you're gonna get a feedback that really allows you to track your current stats such as accuracy, consistency, and even crosshair movement. Soon, you're gonna be able to pinpoint exactly where you need to improve in the most. I'm telling you, man, it's dope. One of the most common mistakes that you can make when trying to perfect your aim is messing around with your settings too much. You know, it can be exciting to really think that, you know, you could change your sensitivities and suddenly find yourself being able to land more shots than before. However, this is actually not true. Sensitivities and other settings can help you move your camera faster, but in reality, guys, I mean, it just takes a lot of dedication and commitment to a single setting to really start seeing improvement. Your sensitivity should be adjusted to whether or not you prefer to play with your wrist or move your whole arm when using a mouse. This also changes if you're a controller player. You know, once you've chosen some settings, stick to it, and over time, you're definitely gonna see some improvement, all right? Remember, you know, good aim relies on good muscle memory, and each time that you change your sense, it's only gonna confuse it. You know, once you've gotten your current settings down, you know, muscle memory-wise, I'm telling you right now, it can alter it a bit by just changing the settings. However, you should change it gradually so that you can easily adjust it to the new changes bit by bit. Do this, and you're gonna find your preferred settings way easier. You know, aim courses can be an excellent way of training your aim in a variety of different settings. In fact, like, it can be a pretty fantastic way to really mix edits and aiming together. But, you know, aim courses are only half the battle. Aim courses help you guys reaction time, but, you know, the one thing that they lack is enemies that can actually fire at you and eliminate you. So to perfect your aim, you actually need to really get your hands dirty and fight against, like, living, breathing opponents. Test dummies might be great for target practice, but there really are no stakes. You know, this lack of pressure is what allows you to eventually just adjust to the routines but you know real opponents will be applying pressure and that stress is actually important for getting accustomed to really transferring those skills over towards a real match so you know you should definitely make sure that you should also grind arena once your muscle memory has adapted to your settings and you won't get into as many fights as you would in creative but you're gonna be facing arena based challenges that's gonna put your aim to the test so to follow up on the previous tip, it also doesn't help if you constantly fight the exact same opponent. Eventually, you become accustomed to their mannerisms and gameplay habits, making them more and more predictable to track. And so while this is a sign that your aim is getting better and you are getting better at just like pre-firing, you're also only getting accustomed to one particular play style. So if you wanna get even better, you need to seek out new challenges and even tougher opponents. You know, tougher opponents will expose you to different strategies and in some cases will even back you into a corner. This is when your aim needs to be the best that can be and so the secret to really good aim in this case is knowing what your opponent is up to and that takes plenty of careful study the more strategies that you're familiar with the better you're going to be able to really recognize them during arena and you're going to be able to aim your sights where you need to get the kill all right, so one habit that you definitely might have developed is always using ADS when trying to hit your target, even you know if they're just getting out of the range. This is especially true if you're coming in from different games, especially FPS. However, learning to hit fire is just as important as using ADS, and it can really help you land more shots quickly after turning around 180 degrees. You know, you also might just want to use hip fire for shooting a build that's right in front of you. Hip fire is actually incredibly important for shotgun usage, and back then when the pump was around, players with good aim could take advantage of 
of landing headshots without having to aim down. Remember, turning to face your target should always be done without holding down the ADS while tracking your opponent, and you should take advantage of ADS, especially if you're playing controller and you're able to utilize aim assist. All right, so going even further, guys, you need to practice your edits just as much as your aim. When applying peace control in a build fight or a box fight, edits are going to open up all sorts of opportunities to really land shots, and you're going to need perfect timing to perform the final edit and aim within the peak. In this case, it's important that you practice your edit first and then your aim. You know, start by learning the steps towards making a peak that you want to start using, and then once you have the edit process down, you need to start working on that aim. It's also important to note that many edits will also require you to get used to moving and aiming at the same time. Therefore, man, the aiming is going to be much harder than previously anticipated. You know, relying too much on aim assist can actually be a detriment towards your training. In fact, like if you really want to maximize your aim, you should turn off aim assist and just train without it. It's going to become more difficult to hit your target on controller. However, like you can benefit in the long run with this method. So the challenge is going to be tough, but little by little, you're going to see yourself adapting with that, I'm telling you. Once you build your skills up enough, you should turn aim assist back on and it's going to help supplement your skills. Aim assist is also not present in mouse and keyboard setups. So if you're looking to switch from controller to keyboard, then and you might want to just take note of that before you start wondering why your aim wasn't as good as before. You know, it could take a bit to really get used to understanding why your aim is not as easy as it was on controller, and I'm telling you, it can help you feel less frustrated or get stuck. Finally, we want to talk about crosshair placement. Often, you can mistake crosshair placement as the act of getting your crosshair on your opponent quickly, but this is actually the second half of the skill. So what you actually want to focus on is where your crosshair is before you move it towards your opponent. Like the next time that you fight an opponent, be sure to really keep track of where your opponent is at all times. And so once you have their placement locked down, you also need to make sure that you can quickly aim in the right direction. So the best crosshair placement is one that allows you to reach where you need to quickly. You know, say you need to focus between a wall and an opponent. Make sure that your crosshair is placed between both objects so you can easily just swap to your opponent if you need to lay down some fire or swap to the build to make a quick edit. So if your crosshair placement is not optimized, then it's gonna take longer to really get it on your opponent. And in Fortnite, those extra seconds can be the factor that tilts the scale of any battle. Crosshair placement, guys, also affects edits and having an optimal position is gonna help you select the squares on the editing grid much faster so your editing speed can improve. You know, in the most recent update, Fortnite added gyro controls to the mix. And so with these new settings, you can use your PS5 or PS4 controller to aim. While many Fortnite players are still like getting used to this new development, it would be a waste if you didn't try practicing with it, all right? If the option is available to you, then keep in mind that turning it on is gonna disable aim assist, but you should be able to have more accuracy after getting the movement down. So think of it as the controller's answer to mouse and keyboard settings, which allows for quicker aim thanks to the mouse. If you aren't already trying this, man, I'm telling you, you're missing out. And the the new control scheme that will most likely see itself in the meta real, real soon. All right, guys, so before we drop you off today, don't forget to check out Aim Lab and find out how you can become a better sharpshooter in a variety of games, ranging from Warzone, Apex Legends, and yours truly, Fortnite. But of course, that's gonna be it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hey man, I believe in you guys, and, and I still want you guys to keep going after your dreams, even when obstacles and struggles are ahead of you. You can do it, but if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else is. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and also feel free to leave a comment and let us know if there's anything that you would be interested in learning more about. Remember, connect with me on my Instagram at Your Motivation Guy. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.